All right, guys, Nick May here in the Walls by Design corporate headquarters. We are getting ready to do our test of Sherwin-Williams versus Benjamin Moore. We've got eight products, and the products are, uh, let's see, Promar 400 from Sherwin-Williams, uh, Super Hyde from Benjamin Moore, Promar 200 from Sherwin-Williams, Retrospect 500 from Benjamin Moore, Coronado by Benjamin Moore, and Super Paint from Sherwin-Williams, Cashmere from Sherwin-Williams, we have Ben from Benjamin Moore, and the primer that we've used is uh, private label by Gyries. I'm not exactly sure who the manufacturer is, but that's a PVA drywall primer. And previously, um, to prepare this, I got everything ready, and I had Tyler, who's uh, helping me on the camera, <laughs> write all of the, uh, the WBD and the black line. And so the test here that we're working on today is for coverage. We're trying to test, we're not testing all of the Sharon Williams or all of the Benjamin Moore products, but what we're trying to do is we're looking at the kind of the mid to lower end products of the two brands and we're trying to figure out who has the best coverage. Now, this is a blind taste test, if you will. I do not know which uh, gallon holds what paint, or what five gallon bucket, for that matter, um, holds what paint product. Uh, Tyler assisted me, he got everything prepped for me. We have everything marked, so at the end of our, our test, we are able, we're gonna be able to look and see which product is which. I didn't want to be skewed, I didn't want to apply any product differently than the other, so I don't know which product I'm gonna be applying in which order. At the end of one coat on all of the, uh, the areas, um, we're going to let it dry and we're going to see which one has the better coverage. At the end of that, we are going to do additional coats on each item uh, until we have full coverage. So we've used all of the same items across the board. They were all brand new as of this morning. So we have Sherlock. Uh, handles except for two. I have kind of two knockoffs because uh, the store didn't have <laughs> enough for me today. Um, but then we're using a half inch nap um, Wooster uh, roller skin. So we've tried to be as scientific as we possibly can, but I know there will be naysayers. I know people will say, well, you didn't do it this way and you didn't do it that way. So sorry, but this is the best we've kind of come up with. Uh, and um, yeah, so let's, uh, let's get started. Keep in mind, these are brand new rollers, so I'm trying to saturate our, um, our roller sleeve. I'm going to try to color within the lines here. As you know, we won't really truly know what the coverage is until it dries. Uh, I don't like this. Uh, I've switched to the cheaper of the roller. The rollers, this is a knockoff Sherlock. And this one I'm having problems with. It's just really wobbly. So if you ever see these blue handles at your paint store, don't buy them. They're very wobbly. And remember this is going up on drywall sheets with just one coat of primer. So it has a tendency to be really dry. Unlike some of you guys in other parts of the country that's very humid, Things dry really fast here in Colorado. We have like negative humidity levels. That's it. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to let everything dry. And um, we're going to see how everything dries out. We're going to keep our time lapse going so you guys know that we're not messing with it. We're not adding anything to it. Um, here in Colorado, because things are so, because everything is so dry, this shall probably not take more than 15 minutes or so. So I will be back and uh, we'll keep the cameras rolling though. So in preparation for this little activity, on the Painter's chat room on Facebook, we had lots of comments, lots of people 
demanding that their particular brand of paint was the best. To which I simply said, it doesn't matter what you think. The only thing that matters is what happens when you roll it out. People were asking me why I wasn't going to be testing all sorts of different products, like products from PPG. And maybe we'll do that in the future, but I kind of thought this is going to be enough. Decided to do, we've got pretty decent coverage uh, on some of them, not so much on others. And we've got one, two, three, three probably has the best so far, four, five, six is pretty close to number three, and then we've got seven and eight. And if you look at probably eight and number one are probably our worst two. And so what I've decided to do is we're gonna do uh, another coat on this far side, and we're, we're gonna put the best two next to each other, and the worst two next to each other, because I really wanna know which is the best and which is the worst. Okay, so here we go. There are definitely other factors that we could be measuring with paint besides coverage, durability, sheen levels. I guess that's something I didn't really talk about. All of these are as close to the same sheen as I possibly could get. Most of them are all eggshell. The exception is the Benjamin Moore Ultra Spec which in their line, the closest thing to an eggshell that I'm used to is their low sheen. So I'm just gonna feel everything, make sure everything is dry in our first round. Okay, so everything is definitely dry. And I would say, we definitely have a winner. Well, we have two that are the best. It'll be interesting to see how they look over there. But right there, those two, I would say, I can still see the black line on that one. And I can still see the black line on this. So I would say that in order to have 100% coverage on both of those, they both need another coat. They both do need a second coat to have full coverage. Now some of these other ones, I don't know if a second coat will be all that's uh, required. We may have to go to three coats. Um, I don't know. But I think the moment that everyone's been waiting for is finally here. So I think now I need to have Tyler's assistance because Tyler's the only one that knows which paints are which. So he's going to come here. I'm going to switch places with him. And he's going to uh, put... He's going to put our, uh, he's going to identify all of our paints for us. All right, so the interesting thing about this is uh, now that we've got all of the, uh, all the players are identified. Uh, now everyone is going to draw their own conclusion. Um, that's why we wanted to bring kind of the two better performers next to each other. We're still waiting on those to dry before we can put another coat on. Um, but uh, one thing that I wanted to talk about is this price point issue. Um, so we checked on, we asked for the retail pricing from both our local uh, Benjamin Moore dealer and uh, the retail pricing, not my pricing as a paint contractor. And we did the same thing with Sherwin Williams and we got the retail prices for Sherwin-Williams. We've got these prices, you know, Promar 200. I know, I don't remember what my Promar 200 price is, but I know it's nowhere near $66. I mean, I must get like 60 or 70% off of retail, I don't know. Um, Super Paint, $56. Um, obviously, from just a, a coverage perspective, if you're a diehard Sherwin-Williams fan, then you'd be kind of silly to be buying Promar 200 uh, when you could be getting Super Paint, which is a less cost from a retail perspective, and it, it definitely has a higher hide and better coverage. Um, but then you go 
one more down over here, and you've got Super High, which is $21 a gallon. Like, that's their retail price. That is not my price. I think my price is something like $17 a gallon or something like that. But look, there's, I mean, there's definitely a difference between the two, but that thing is more than twice as expensive, um, and you've got to, you know, you've got to look at it as it makes sense. Um, then we got Coronado all the way down there at $22.99 a gallon um, with probably the least coverage of all the Benjamin Moore products that we've done here. So if we go and look at our best performers, we put number three, which is Sherwin-Williams Super Paint at $56 a gallon up against number six, which is the Benjamin Moore Ben product at $39 or $40 per gallon. Um, that's kind of a judgment call, like which one do you think is a better, has better coverage? They're really close. Um, I'm gonna say, I definitely can't see a letter on either one of them, but I could probably make out the line at the bottom a little bit. Uh, on number six. So I've got, to have, I've got to call that the best coverage of all of the boards is number three. So that's a Sherman Williams product that is super paint. And, um, but that's at 56, 47 a gallon versus number six, which is the Benjamin Moore Ben product at $40 a gallon. Now, if we go over to the two on the lower end of the scale, we obviously have a clear winner. Um, or should I say clear loser? Um, so number eight is definitely the worst performing paint in the coverage category. Um, and number one is, is, I guess, holding its own um, at least against uh, number eight. So number eight is the Promore 400 product. And number one was our Coronado product at $23 a gallon. So the last test that I want to do is we're going to find out how many coats of coverage or how many coats is required to get 100% coverage. So um, one coat versus three coats is obviously a lot more labor. And so we're going to uh, continue rolling um, at least one of the cameras to make sure that Nick stays honest. But uh, <laughs> Um, we're going to see how many coats does it, does it take on each of the paints to get 100% coverage. All right, guys, so um, 
Final thoughts on our test here, Cheryl Williams versus Benjamin Moore. Ultimately, you have to make the final decision. Uh, what I want to do is I want to just reiterate which products were which, um, going down the line, one through eight, and what their retail price was. Um, obviously, you have to go and talk to your retailer and find out what your cost is on the product. Um, Benjamin Moore Coronado was number one, um, $22.99. We did shoot that one over to the uh, the lowest from uh, the lowest of the two products in our testing. However, when we did it a second time over on the other wall, it did appear to cover better than it did the first time. Don't know why, different lighting, I don't know. Uh, number two was Benjamin Moore Super High, really great price point at $21.95 a gallon. Um, really good coverage. Uh, for a one coat product, we didn't use it uh, on the other wall. Um, but again, you got to look at what's your price point. Obviously, with two coats, we got really good coverage. Sherwin Williams Super Paint 56.49. That one did make it over to um, the best category. Uh, and if I had to uh, really call a very close race, I'd probably call that the uh, the winner out of the out of the bunch. But again, it's 56.49. You got to find out what your price point is. Next product was Sherwin Williams Pro Mark 200. Um, the problem that I have with this product is um, they have a tendency when I talk to reps to put that product up against. Um, oh gosh, which one does he put it up against? A lot of times um, he'll put that one up against. Um, I guess ultra spec and that's when I did a test and originally when I did this test I did it in a showrooms dealership and I was putting the Promar 200 up against the ultra spec product and if I could do this test again I would put those two side by side but again I wanted to not know which products were which um, you have to go back and look through the video and see how does that one compare uh, to the ultra spec but that one is 66.59 at a retail price uh, versus a $33.99 retail price for UltraSpec. The next product was the Sherwin Williams Cashmere. Um, you know, when I did the, this test originally in a Sherwin Williams dealership and I had them side by side, I had a board that, did, that had black lines, that's where I got this idea. This was the only Benjamin Moore or Sherwin Williams product that I was able to get to cover better than the ultra spec because to be honest that's the product that we use every day in the field um, and so that's what i was comparing it to um, but at a 56 49 dollar a gallon price point obviously it's it's pretty large again depends on your pricing uh, benjamin moore ben great retail price at 39.99 um, really good coverage that was number was that number six mm -hmm. that was number six that made it over to our best of very close uh, in coverage comparable to number three which was the sherwin williams super paint product which just barely i think beat it just by a little bit then again we have the benjamin moore ultra spec product at 33.99 great retail price i have always said that this product is uh, one of the best products in the Benjamin Moore lineup because I feel like it's the best bang for the dollar. Um, you know, we get really great coverage. It's a zero VOC product. I know that product the best out of all of these products. Um, and I really like the sheen level um, out of it. Um, then on our last one, the Sherwin Williams Pro Mar 400. Um, we're gonna call that one as the worst of the bunch. Number eight. Obviously, that's what it is with one coat. Um, it does seem to have good enough coverage when you do two coats, so I gotta give it props for that. I don't feel like I can really see uh, any black, like I can't see, I don't know what the letter that was. Uh, I guess I could go back and figure it out. So that was, that was supposed to be a B, but it's obviously gone. Um, uh, but that's our test, guys. Benjamin Moore versus Sherwin Williams. Um, highly recommend that you do the numbers and you uh, analyze your business and know what your products, what your price points are on your products to know which product you should be using. 
Uh, and then you've got to do the analysis on your jobs, your job costing, that's super important. And I feel like um, a lot of the guys that I know in the industry across the country don't necessarily know their numbers. I know that there was a discussion in the chat room about um, a, a newer painter asking what should my material cost be on a project and guys were just throwing out numbers, $2,000, $1,800. We here at Balls by Design, we really break it down to knowing our price point per type of job. So like on cabinets, we have one material cost versus um, painting walls and ceilings and trim and all that kind of stuff. That's a totally different price point because we're using different amounts of product and um, different uh, number of coats. And it's just, it's, it, you can't compare those things. So you really have to know your numbers and hopefully this starts you on uh, the trajectory to, to really start looking and anal analyzing those things. So thanks for joining us. Please share this video and look forward to our next uh, analysis that we do. We have a bunch of them uh, on the, the docket to, to do. The next one probably while we have these up will be testing sh um, touch up. Uh, we're gonna let these sit for a couple weeks so they can cure and, and completely dry out. And so then we'll come back and do some touch up and see if there's a difference on any of these products with touch ups. Because obviously as a paint contractor, you have to go back and do touch ups. At least I hope you are uh, for your customers because that is a, that's a, a big thing. And if it doesn't, if the product doesn't touch up well, then you end up having to repaint walls, which obviously costs you a lot more time and money. So this is Nick May from Walls by Design here in Denver, Colorado. See ya.